In Jamaica, Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips is a picture of confidence. The government's point man on finance is upbeat that the country will score favorably on the latest IMF review. Speaking at a press conference on Friday, Dr. Phillips said his administration had met the key objectives. Dr. Phillips also noted that the expectations for passing the current review is based on the government's achievements to date under the reform program. Because economic transformation in just over two years has seen the country evolve to an economy with single-digit inflation. Point-to-point -point inflation is, was 1.8 percent in September, the lowest since 1967. We have seen a sharply reduced balance of payments deficit on the current account. We have more than tripled our net international reserves from what it was when we started the program. It was $2.9 billion at the end of October. We have increased local and foreign direct investment. The stock market index is at record levels. We have a declining debt-to-GDP ratio an improved business environment and declining unemployment and improved credit ratings from international rating agencies. The executive board of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, will review Jamaica's performance in December. If approval is granted, 39 million U.S. dollars will be made available to the country. Chief of the IMF mission team in Jamaica, Uma Ramakrishnan, outlined the conditions to be considered by the executive board as determined by the mission team. A gradual economic recovery is underway with growth projected at about 1.5% for this fiscal year and about 2.5% for the next fiscal year. The unemployment rate declined to 13.1% in July and employment gains are being generated in the tourism and BPO sectors. Inflation fell to a historic low of about 1.8% in September and foreign exchange reserves have increased to about 2.9 billion US dollars. Program implementation remains strong. All performance targets through end September were met, and the structural reforms are also on track. The authorities and the mission agreed that the focus should now be to ensure that Jamaica moves quickly to a position of strong, sustained, and dynamic economic growth and job creation. She adds that with macroeconomic stability now well established, the government should focus its attention on debt reduction, realignment of monetary policies, among other reforms, to better support the economy. To this end, a staff-level agreement was reached to lower the target for the primary surplus to 7.25% for this fiscal year, percent of GDP for this fiscal year, and to 7% of GDP for fiscal year 16-17. This additional fiscal space will provide an opportunity to increase public spending on capital outlays that boost growth and job creation as well as to continue to protect social spending. Further, a more expansionary monetary stance will also help complement this fiscal expansion by supporting credit expansion and private sector activity. Meanwhile, following on his declaration recently that more than 100,000 jobs will be available to Jamaicans over the next five years, Dr. Phillips was armed with information at Friday's press conference to substantiate his claim. We base this on the progress that has been seen thus far. From between July 2013 and July 2015, the employed labor force increased by close to 40,000 jobs, 39,600 between in two years, between July 2013 and July 2015. Over the last four years, a total of 63,900 jobs have been added to the labor force. That is in the period between October 2011 and July. 2015. Also of significance is that the increase in the employed labor force
from April to July of this year was 18,400, of which the 20 to 24 age group, the young people, increased by 11,200. The point being that of the 40,000 jobs created approximately between July 2013 and July 2015, the pace of job creation has increased in the last year, in fact, in the last few months. But where will these new jobs be coming from? Dr. Phillips says growing and improving industries hold great promise that we have been able to identify specific investments underway, both in tourism, business process outsourcing, in the energy sector, where we also had good news this week, given the fortress agreement to establish a uh, LNG terminal in Jamaica, uh, agriculture, and even manufacturing. I believe that at a minimum, we can achieve, and indeed I believe we can surpass these targets. It will mean, however, that we will have to continue to maintain our fiscal discipline and further improve our business environment and reduce our bureaucracy. And while the government remains optimistic about these 100,000 jobs creating, over the years, over the next five years, the parliamentary opposition is not convinced. Opposition spokesman on finance, Audley Shaw, questions a plan to ensure these jobs are created versus making projections based on statistics of the past. Mr. Dr. Phillips has made an announcement of 100,000 jobs without telling us how he, which way he's going to achieve it. He has not presented a plan to achieve that growth. To me, this 100,000 jobs that he's promising, he's a ticket out of the air. It's a little bit like the lot of scam. It's another scam. It's a job scam. That's what it is, to try to attract some attention and to, to catch some votes. And though Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips outlined that the tourism, business process outsourcing, BPO and agriculture are among the key areas from which his projected jobs will come, Mr. Shaw is still asking for a detailed plan. Tourism always has the potential, but it has to have the, the right mix of incentives that can really accelerate even greater investment in tourism than we're seeing now. That agriculture is in trouble in Jamaica, and it needs, it needs a whole makeover. Because, for instance, sugar, which is one of the main stays of agriculture, sugar is now about to be in the doldrums, and it's about to be in the doldrums because price of sugar on the world market is plummeting, and it's likely to drop further one third percent by next year. What is the alternative to sugar? What is the diversification plan? So the minister, he says where he wants to go, but he doesn't tell us how to get there. That's the, that's the basic issue. We have to have a clear, unambiguous, specific path to achieving those levels of growth. Mr. Shaw argues that 100,000 jobs can be possible under the right circumstances, noting that it is a feat the former JLP government achieved in the 1980s. And I was part of that in the 1980s, by the way, when we did create 100,000 jobs between 1986 and 1989. I was in charge of investment promotion in New York for Jamaica, all overseas investment promotion. We promoted investment from from Hong Kong to Taiwan to you know, North America and Europe. It was a, an unbelievable time when we were creating economic growth of 6% per year. Now, to achieve 100,000 jobs over that period of time, you can't do it at half a percent and 1% growth, which is what the minister is giving right now. To, to achieve those levels of job creation, you must go back to 5 and 6% per year economic growth. And that is what has eluded this government over the past four years, as it did in their 18 years in power from 1989 to 2007.